Thanks, Mike. Today, the Meetup app and website is focused first and foremost on events, and that's great. But to make a better member experience, we asked ourselves, why are people actually attending events? And research told us, friendship. We had calls with 15 different members who created their Meetup accounts using the Meetup app for a three month period. And what we learned from this particular research is that members, they weren't just haphazardly showing up to meet up, they came for a reason and they were hoping to get something out of it. And so we asked them like, why did you do this? Are we actually meeting your desires? Um, and if we are, how are we doing it? And if not, what is it that you think is missing? And what we learned really quickly is that our members fell into two primary buckets. There were the pragmatists and the aspirationalists. Now, when it came to the pragmatists, they had a specific event that they wanted to attend. Maybe their friends said, you wanna play pickleball with me Saturday? Great, here's a link, join that, and then we can play pickleball. Or they were like, I really wanna get better at playing guitar. So they had to play guitar and they signed up for an event that way. And making friends for them was really just a bonus. Whereas if we compare that to the aspirationalists, these people really were more audacious and hopeful about how Meetup could serve them. They wanted to make friends. So this was like a, a broader, deeper desire for engaging with Meetup and this is the particular group that we decided to focus on. And from the aspirationalists, we saw two significant things. Um, either they were going through some significant life change. Maybe it was a romantic breakup. Maybe they were moving to a new city. They were retiring from a long career, transitioning from post-college life. And sometimes we have people that were going through two or three of those things all at the same time. And then also we noticed that there were people who specifically said, I need to make new friends. Maybe um, some people lost a lot of friends, their friend group during COVID or from, from some sort of life change. And they were specifically saying, I don't care what the activity is. I just wanna find people that I can get along with and make friends. Now, why is this really important? There was a PBS special from just yesterday that reported 20% of single men say they don't have friends. Essentially, we're in a friendship recession. And then similarly, there was additional research that was done that showed that 46% of Americans identify as lonely. I'll kind of let that sit for a second. That's a very sobering number, 46%. In fact, if you look at this chart, it kind of shows the percentage of adults who feel lonely on a regular basis. And this shows that Gen Z is lonelier than previous generations, actually twice as lonely as our grandparents and it's only getting worse. And this can sound, you know, a little alarming, <laughs> So just be gentle with yourself as you process this, because for the most part, all of us, will, we feel kind of lonely at times. But what's really fascinating is how people are looking to address the loneliness. They are increasingly turning to apps. If we look at the top 10 fastest growing social app categories, Friend discovery has seen a 208% increase per year. And Meetup falls directly into that bucket. But how are we doing? What does it take to actually make a friend in the Meetup app? Well, first, you know, you go through, you browse a list of events, then you say, oh, is this event interesting for me? Okay, sure. Um, can I actually go? Am I working during this time? Okay, now, how far away is it from where I am? Can I attend the event? 
emotionally, do I think I can even go to this event with these people that I've never met? And then, hey, I'm, you know what, I'm gonna go, I've done it, I'm going, I'm enjoying myself and let's see if I can make some friends. Then I go home and I'm like, hmm, okay, I wonder if those two people I talked to at the event, you know, did were we vibing with each other? <laughs> um, I don't know, what, what, what should I do? And then, okay, should I do all of that again? It's, no, <laughs> it's really painful. So as Meetup, we said, how can we better support people towards friendship in a safe and anxiety-free way? This was so important to us because we recognize that making friends can be very uncomfortable, very overwhelming. It's like, I don't know if I wanna share my personal information with this person. How do I know that I can trust them? Is, is my concept of friendship the same as their concept of friendship? And the list of questions can go on and on and on. So now I wanna transition things over to Mike to talk about some of the principles that we're keeping in mind as we find ways to help people make friends on Meetup. Okay, thank you, Anise. So yeah, folks, like I said, my name is Mike and I'm a product manager here at Meetup, which means I work closely with Anise here to uh, make the Meetup app and website better. And, and so this has really been a big area of our focus. And so as Anise has kind of walked through this problem, I wanna share what we're doing and what 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 how Meetup is making it easier to make friends in, 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 in this new year. Um, so as we approach this problem with that context that Anise shared, we first, we needed to align ourselves around four principles that we set, that we identified as most important for people. Uh, and, and a lot of these principles came from our conversations with members who were trying to go to events and looking to make friends. And that first principle you see is privacy, is that it's important that we don't, we don't expose and share our information for anybody to see across the internet. Um, you know, uh, we are people and we need to be respected in that way. And in a similar vein, safety is important. Kind of like Anise hinted, uh, people wanna make sure uh, that when they share their personal information that it's not used in a way that that um, is disrespectful or a way that could hinder them. We also heard a consistent theme from our conversations with people this past year or last year that a lot of events come with a certain sense of pressure and we it's really important to help people feel a, a, a kind of a, a feeling of low stakes that there's not a whole lot riding on them that it's okay if they don't make a best friend after the event it's okay if they go home and that's it and it's also okay if they keep talking with someone um, we, we really want to make it low pressure and low stakes and finally this first this this fourth uh, principle is about being events first that at the end of the day, Meetup is about gathering together and being together. And as much as we try and support people through making friends, first and foremost, it's about being together through events and doing things together. And that's always going to be through everything we do. So in approaching this, um, we did a number of things this past year that helped with this. First was profiles. I don't know if you've already seen this in the app or on the web, but we want to make it easier for people to know who they're showing up to be with. So anytime you're in the app or on the website and you're looking at an event, you can go and see who's going and, and learn more about them on their profile. And you can update your profile to share more about what you're, who you are and, and who you're look, what you're looking for here on Meetup. Really, really happy and gotten a really great response and seeing that these profiles also really encourage people to go to more events together. We also introduced a feature, uh, uh, an updated attendee list. So rather than seeing an attendee list to an event that just shows a list of, 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 of names, um, you get to see who these people are and what you share in common with them. So for example, if I'm looking at this event, it's a Hobbit uh, book group, and I see that Brian is going, and I already see that we have one shared interest. We both like Star Trek. And I can know and I can more confidently show up to the event knowing that, hey, Brian's going to be there. Um, and maybe, you know, we can no pressure, but we can always fall back and talk about Star Trek. It's something that we share in common. So those were two things we did this year, but we still said we knew we could do better. We can knew we could do better to help people um, forming relationships in, 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 in a way that was anxiety free, in a way that's comfortable and safe, um, even after the event ends. And so we knew we could take a lot of tips 
from other um, apps and websites. Um, so we said, hmm, do we wanna be like Facebook and Facebook friends in the way that you send a friend request to someone? And we said, no, on Facebook friends, anybody can see your friends. And that doesn't align with our value of privacy that we previously noted is important. Or we said, hmm, maybe we should be like Instagram where you can follow people. And we said, no, it's not healthy or fitting with Meetup for anybody to follow anyone because that kind of goes against our value of safety. So maybe LinkedIn. LinkedIn has connections where you send a connection request to someone. We said, no, not, not that really either because whenever you send a connection request on someone to LinkedIn, there's there's this feeling that they're looking at your request and they're either going to accept or deny you. And it, that's just sometimes an uncomfortable feeling knowing that they very well will just say no to you. And that doesn't really fit with what we're looking for with that low stress feeling that we want um, and people want with Meetup. So well, what about Twitter? Twitter has a feed, you know, a list of, of activity. We said, no, Meetup is about events. It's about showing up to be with people. It's not about getting distracted on your phone, on your computer, and seeing a list of activity. It's about showing up and being together. And that's that's always first and foremost what Meetup is. And so as but we took inspiration and we looked around and we listened to members and what they were looking for, and we came to Meetup Connections. And Meetup Connections is really simple. Step one, attend an event. Step two, open the app. Step three, choose the connections, the people you met at the event, and then match. You choose people and they choose you, and then your connections and you can attend another event together in the future. So we're gonna share more about connections. This is really what we, what we wanna um, emphasize here. So some more details about how connections work. Um, these are some little, little graphics you'll see even in the product. Um, so connections, connections are people you've met at meetup events and who you want to stay in contact with, stay in touch with. Just like we shared this really core value, connections are private. Your connections are only visible to you. Think of it as a private contact list. It's not a public friend list. It's a private contact list. And you can't connect with anybody. You can only connect with people you actually met. You can only connect with people you actually went to an event with. So after each event, you get invited to say, do you want to connect with other people after the event? And then finally, this last one is so important. Connections are mutual. Again, it's not like Instagram where you can follow anybody or stalk someone or watch someone. Connections are mutual. Both people select each other. And only by both people selecting each other do they become connections. And you can see this fun graphic of two people both selecting the same button, and that's how they become connections. So... We, um, this, this connections uh, became available in December, um, just about a month ago. And we're really proud. Um, every day, uh, 8,528 people are, uh, are, are being you know, chosen as, as connections. 8,528 people um, are, 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 people are selecting and saying, yes, I want to be, I want to connect. This only happens after people attend events. So they're attending an event, opening the app and selecting other people. And on average, when someone opens the app and wants to connect with other people, on average, they're choosing um, almost three people, which really is inspiring to see all the awesome um, relationships that are forming at meetup events. That means that after people attend events, they want to they want to um, connect with others as many as three people, which is really exciting. So I want to share a bit more again about how connections work and what what this is like when you use it, and again how what this is all about of, of making it easier to form friendships in an anxiety-free and comfortable way on Meetup. So if you haven't used this feature before, you can you can open it now if you want. You can go to Meetup on the website and or on the app and you tap the connections button on the website. It's at the top of the page. You'll see it at the top um, next to uh, messages or on the phone, it's at the bottom. And if you haven't made any connections, it will look like this, you know, it will kind of explain how it works at the top. And then it will kind of have this empty space where it says you don't have any connections yet. And, and then and then there's there's um, some other buttons there that help you find events to go to to make connections. But let's say you go to an event and the event starts at 6 p.m. and ends at 8 p.m. 
and it's 8 p.m. The event has ended. You're on your way home. You get home. You pull out your phone. What's next? This is the opportunity where you get to actually make connections. So you open up your phone and you'll see an opportunity to say, hey, we hope the book, the book club reading event, the Hobbit event was good. Connect with someone you met. So you tap the button to say connect now. And we take you to this page that shows all the people who attended the event. So Adam was there, Amber was there, uh, Casey was there, or Cassie was there, Cindy was there. And um, you say, oh yeah, Adam, um, he was great. We had a great conversation. Um, but before I, I connect with him, I just wanna know a little bit more to say, hey, is he interested in making friends? I'm not sure if he wants to make friends. So I tap on Adam and then I tap on that button that, that says view profile. And then I can see Adam's profile and I see that, oh yeah, it says looking to make friends. And that makes me feel better. I know that I'm looking for friends. He's also looking for friends. And so I feel comfortable tapping that connect with Adam button. And I tap connect with Adam and it tells me, okay, great. You've, you've done what you've done your part. Um, Adam will make his selections. He'll hopefully open the app. Sometimes he, he might not open the app, but we hope he opens the app and we'll select people also. And I feel confident that, you know, Adam and I hit it off. I feel confident that if he opens the app, he'll select me too. Again, he might not open the app. He might have gotten busy when he got home, put his kids to bed or something. I don't know, but um, I hope he selects me back too. Um, then I, I close that and I say, oh yeah, Amber, you know, I enjoyed, we kind of nerded out um, on, on another subject. And so I tap connect um, to, to stay in touch with Amber. And I see this, it says, okay, we're connected. And that means, I see this because that means Amber chose me too. We both selected each other. That means we're both connected. And that means that now when we go to that page, we can always see each other. We can always have some reference that we're connected and we can stay in contact and we can invite each other to upcoming events to attend with each other. So just for some reference after that, I click continue and I leave an event rating. The event was awesome. I gave it five stars. I said that I met some new people. Um, the event was engaging, um, and I looked for my next event to go to. So you might be wondering, what does it actually then mean to really be connected? And I want to just answer some questions that we often hear. Um, so number one, can I be watched? Can someone stop me? No. When you connect with someone, there's really actually not any big difference, except that you're now in each other's contact list they don't have access to any more information. And unfortunately, for better or for worse, you don't have any more information about them than you had before. The difference is that you're in each other's contact book, in a sense. You're in each other's connections list. That's the difference. No more, watch, no, you can't watch each other anymore. Can someone message me more? Well, at any time, you can change your, your preferences on who can message you. Um, that's it, that's a separate setting. Um, but no, you, you're, you don't expect to get barraged with more messages. They cannot message you anymore. You can change your privacy settings whenever you'd like. And if I decide to connect with someone and we decide to connect with each other, can I end that later? Yes. At any time you decide it's not a good idea to have a connection, you can always end it. Um, and they, we, we, you, they won't be notified. If you select end connection, it's not going to send them a notification. They'll probably forget. Don't worry about that. I just want to really again reinforce that connections are mutual. This is two people deciding they want to be connections. There's no request where I send a request to someone and hope that they respond. Remember how LinkedIn works that way? Facebook works that way. That's not how this works. This is two people both choosing each other. They both can see each other in each other's connections list. This connection list has a shortcut so they can message each other and stay in contact. Connections are only visible to you and you can end a connection at any time. Okay, so that's an overview of connections. And in this last set of, of time together, I wanna share what's ahead. Because you might be saying, wait, is that really it? What's the point? It's just a contact list. I can already exchange phone numbers with people. I can already follow each other on Instagram. We think that's great. Keep doing that. That's cool. Um, we hope that Connections makes that easier. Um, but there's more to come from Connections that we're really excited about. And it's going to be beneficial to people, both members and organizers. And so I want to share what that is. First, 
you'll see a label. Um, this is coming soon. This is not live now. But when you're browsing for events and looking about what you're going to do this weekend, you'll see that you'll, you'll have certain events highlighted that say that one of your connections is going. So say that Anise and I are connections. We meet at a tech event. But then I see, oh, she's going to a gardening event. And I also have a hobby of gardening. And it says one connection going. I tap on that event and I see that Anise is going. She's my connection. We both decided to be connections together. And now I see that she's going to. And I can then maybe DM her and say, hey, I hear that you're going to the gardening event. Maybe I'll join you. It'd be great to see you again. We can keep talking um, about, about tech or gardening or, or whatnot. Um, just want to be really clear. There's no change in visibility settings. There's just not, there's just no change in your privacy settings at any time you could adjust your privacy settings, but, um, we're not exposing any additional information that wasn't already visible. So I'm really excited about this. And this will be, you can expect this in the coming weeks on the, on the web and on the apps. Another thing is the ability to invite connections to events. And this is really, I think, really exciting. And so, again, I'll use the example of Anise and I. Maybe we connect at a tech event um, and we really bond over coding for Android. And I go to another event and it's about Android. And I RSVP, I say, I'm going to go. And I say, hey, Anise, I think you also would like this. And so I can send, I can really, it makes it really easy to send Anise an invitation with a message that says, hey, Anise, you know, I'm going to this event. Um, hey, if you're available, you know, you're welcome to join me. And so this is um, hoping, hoping to you know, encourage more people to RSVP together, to show up together, to keep the conversation going. I'll say personally, I've met people, amazing people at events, but I didn't really quite feel comfortable asking them out to coffee or asking them to the park. I didn't feel like we were really at that point but I feel like this is a better step of saying, instead of saying, hey, do you want to get coffee? I can say, hey, do you want to come to this event with me? And it's an activity. Again, if you can invite people to coffee, that's awesome. Do it. I think that's great. Um, but we hope that this feature with connections just makes it easier for certain people. Um, so with that overview of connections, I'm going to hand it back to Anise. Thanks, Mike. Um, Meetup is committed to helping fight the loneliness epidemic. And we just wanna make it easier and simpler to keep in contact with people even after the event ends. Like friendship shouldn't be this hard. We hear stories practically every day about how Meetup has made someone's life better. Oh, I found a great friend here. Oh, I'm finally being able to leave my house. Just so many really positive stories about how Meetup is helping people to make friends. And honestly, we're just so excited about how you're gonna form connections and hopefully spend less time on the computer and more time together. Thank you. Okay, great. So Anise, I think that's it. Maybe I'll stop sharing my screen and we'll start digging into questions. Yeah, that sounds great, Mike. Let's see what we have in our Q&A. Okay, so Mike, I'll say the first question says, I've seen the recent connections features that has been added. Why can you only connect for 24 hours? Okay, I can take that one. So um, I see Elaine asked that question. So Elaine, we have a theory and you tell us if you think what you think of this, but our theory is that if people are encouraged to make their decision sooner, they're more likely to make a decision. So if the event ends and I get home and I know that at any moment I, in the next seven days, I can make a connection, I might just keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. But if I know that I need to take that step immediately in the next 24 hours, I'm more likely to do it. Now, the downside with that is that sometimes I might miss that 24 hour window. And I, even though I wanted to connect with people, I never opened the app within 24 hours. And so I missed the whole chance when we get that. We're trying to find what that perfect balance is between um, encouraging people to do it quickly so that people are forming connections as quickly as possible, while also making sure that people actually have the chance in their busy lives to open the app and make those connections. So um, great question. 
Um, share any feedback you have there about your personal experience, but we want to keep making this better and I'm very open to feedback. Awesome. Um, the next question is, is there a cost for this? If so, how much? Um, so wait, hey, I'll take I'll take the first pass. Connections are free. <laughs> All members who attend events are able to form connections. Now, as Mike showed, there's some additional functionality that if you are a subscriber, we offer to you. We allow you to make unlimited connections, but really everyone can make connections on Meetup. So we're really encouraging you to just try out the feature. And honestly, we're super open to feedback. It's been less than a month since we've launched. Um, so everyone can make connections. Um, Wait, all right, let I'm, me. I'm going to take yeah, a few more. Ahead, Mike. So, so yeah. Anne asks, so can this be done on the web? Yes. So I gave that demo in the screenshots of the app, but that same thing is on the web. The way it looks on the web is after the event and you open your computer, you'll see in the bottom right-hand corner, a little prompt, but also even better in the top of the window, you'll see that, that connections button. That's always the place you can go. After the event, go click on that connections button and then you'll see a prompt and you'll see the ability to go and, 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 and choose people to stay in contact with. Um, and I'm gonna answer another question. Mary, um, Mary asked, um, we have 24 hours to request the connection do they only have the same 24 hours to see and accept? Okay, Mary, I love your curiosity, but there is no see and accept. That's how we're different than LinkedIn. That's how this is different than LinkedIn. Where LinkedIn, you send a, a request or Facebook, you send a request. The other person receives your request and then decides to accept or deny. That does not happen on Meetup. We do not want people to go and denying people. Instead, in 24 hours, two people can choose each other. They, they both met each other at the event. They can say, yes, that Anise is someone I wanna stay in contact with. And Anise chose me and said, Mike is someone that she wants to stay in contact with. And when we both do that, then we're connected. So I hope that answers the question. Um, great, thanks, Mike. Uh, an anonymous person asks, along the spirit of privacy, can we decide which interests we want to share with each specific group? I have a wide range of interests and don't want an all or nothing approach to sharing my interests. Um, so to the anonymous person, no, we don't have that capability. However, it seems like a very valid idea. So I'll make sure we capture it as a feature request for you. Um, okay. So, and then I'll just take one more from Clive, which is really simple. Where is the in connection option? You go to that member's profile right beside the chat with them button. You'll see an overflow menu and you can remove the connection. Okay. Um, I'm looking at questions, just a moment. Um, Um, I'm gonna. Re I haven't totally read this, but I think I think I'm gonna answer this. So Rookie asks, "Can someone see your initial request for a connection, or is it only visible when both parties has connected?" Yes. So connections happen when both people connect, um, when both people choose each other. Um, so when I, if Rookie, if I selected you, um, you would not see a request. Um, you would have to choose me back. Now we didn't plug this. But someone previously asked, is there a price for connections? And Anise answered your question. There is no price for connections, but there is an option if you want to pay an extra fee and then you get some extra features. So this is the Meetup Plus subscription. And as someone that is subscribed, I'm subscribed to Meetup Plus. If, 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 if someone selects me, I get to see that they selected me. That way I can make sure that I choose them back. Because maybe it's really important to me Personally, that I want to make sure that if someone chooses me, that I choose them back. I want to I want to really go that extra mile. So I subscribe to Meetup Plus. That way, when they choose me, when I enter the connection um, page, when I see all the, the grid of people, I can see, oh, Anise selected me. I can know that. It's kind of like cheating a little bit, um, but but it kind of helps um, if you're looking to make your first connections. Um, so that's available with, with the Meetup Plus subscription. 
It's also available to organizers too. Um, okay, so the next one, next question is from Claudia. Will the host of the event remind attendees about the connections feature since it's so new? Um, we don't have any control of that, Claudia, unfortunately. Uh, we, we hope that um, the hosts see value in this feature and that they will try to remind um, the members, but we don't have any control over that. Yet keep in mind what Mike demoed is that there will be a notification to you. So you'll receive an email. And if you go back to the app, you'll also get a push notification and a little pop-up so that you can remember to make your selections. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think that's a great idea, Claudia. I think it's something to plug to your, your favorite organizer of saying like, you know, if you go to them and say, I think this could be helpful to make sure that more people at the event are doing this, then I, I think your organizer would appreciate hearing your opinion. Um, there was a question of, can we connect with the host? Yes. So when you, when you go to the page and you choose, hey, who did you meet? Who would you like to stay in contact with? You can choose the host. Um, and, and that's, yeah, that's totally an option. Someone also asked, um, uh, can, can connections see your private email or your contact information? Um, so no, 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 no. Uh, privacy was something that was one of our four like main values. And so when you're connected, there's no additional information that's exposed, N nada, no additional information. The only difference is now um, you just see each other when you go on the Meetup app or website and you click on connections, you sue each other, makes it easier to DM each other. In the future, we'll make it easy to invite each other to events. Um, and there was a related question, Mike, from IG. That's he or she asks, can you repeat the part about when you said this information is already available? What type of information is already available? Thanks. So when we say types of information, these are this is the information that you put in your profile, in your public profile. So if you put your name and it's your name, they can see your profile photo. If you put your profile photo, um, they can see what interests you have or groups you belong to if you have that setting um, that allows people to see it. Otherwise, you could change the setting where they don't get to see that information. So when you're connected with someone, um, it's the same information that is available based on that particular member's privacy settings. Uh, Mary, Mary asked another question. It's great. Um, if I select someone and they don't respond in time, because remember there's just that, that limited time that for them to respond, are they still on my short list? So I'm going to answer this question in a few different ways. Um, number one, if, if um, you select someone, but they don't get the chance to select you back, then no, you're not gonna see them anywhere. It's not like you're gonna have a list anywhere of pending connections that, you know, it's just, you know, let it go and, you know, hopefully go to the next event and see them again um, and have more conversation um, and connect that time. So that that's an one answer, but another answer um, is, maybe this is too complicated, but let's just say that Mary, you choose me and I don't really get the chance to choose anyone back but then we attend another event together. Um, if we attend another event, we both still need to choose each other. So if that answers your question, um, it's kind of like after each event, after that 24 hours, all the selections are kind of erased um, unless you matched. I know that's kind of technical or confusing, but hopefully that answers your question. Um, and Anonymous asks, is this inclusive of countries beyond America, Europe, i.e. Africa? Yes, it is. It's available to all members and groups. Okay, and Eric asks, what if one of the people has DMs turned off? So when you go to your, your to, just so everyone knows what Eric is referencing is in your privacy settings, you can control who can send you a private message. You can have anyone on Meetup contact you, only people in your groups contact you, or only organizers contact you. So if you go to those settings now, you'll see that they're slightly updated. They're slightly tweaked. Um, and you'll see that um, now um, it will say um, or organizers and contacts can contact you uh, or connections can contact you. So what that means is uh, if you're connected with someone 
even if your DM setting is for only organizers or was only for organizers to contact you, now it's organizers and, and connections can contact you. So we did that to make sure that all connections can, can contact each other um, while pe allowing people to still preserve their privacy preferences. Um, uh, oh, I if Ben Winkle asked an interesting question, I, I think is, is this event, I think Skip was referring to this event right now that we're in going to apply to connections. I mean, I, yeah, I don't see why not. Right. Anise. Yeah, that's what I was like. I was actually just going on my phone to see yeah. if, if it will, because I don't know if we put any restrictions based on event size. Um, but I hope yeah. not. No, yeah, uh, I know. It looks like it's there. Yeah, it so like it's get, available, I mean, so. yeah, open up after this event ends. I don't know what time it's scheduled to event, and maybe it's scheduled yeah, to end but... in five minutes. You know, after that, you should be able to open your phone or the website, and yeah, choose me. Um, and I'll I'll, I'll select you back. <laughs> to connection. Actually, I didn't RSVP to this. I was a bad meetup meetup bird. What? I didn't I didn't. Oh, I, know I, I did. So I did, Mike. <laughs> I'm bad. Okay. I'm going to have so many uh, connections. Yeah. Okay, everyone, awesome. everyone go choose a niece. <laughs> okay, at least now you have a responsibility. You're going to have, you're going to be the coolest cat in town. Oh, this is a great question. Um, Anonymous asked, what if you're already at the event and you both decide you already want to connect? Is there a way to do that at the event? Currently, there is not. Um, however, it is on our roadmap to soon allow you to connect at the event. Yeah, thank you for plugging that. Um, can you bring a friend to a meetup? Do they need to join? Okay, so this is a question not about connections, but just in general. Um, and yeah, so when you are, whenever you are RSVP, um, okay. You can click RSV, click attend, and some event hosts allow people to bring plus ones and some do not. So it's important to respect the preferences of that event host. If there is not an option to bring plus one, then you probably shouldn't bring your friend with you. If there is an option to, um, if it doesn't ask you, hey, do you want to bring someone with you? Then yeah, that's a great opportunity to bring bring a friend and no, they don't need to sign up to meet up for meetup in order to attend. But of course it's helpful to sign up for meetup. Um, looking for, I feel like we've answered lots of questions. Yeah, I think we've covered everything. Um, okay, awesome. Let's bring it to a close. We did it, Mike. Virtual high fives. <laughs> Thank you everyone for attending. Um, this has been our pleasure. Honestly, we're so excited about um, just helping you make friends in the new year. So look forward to hearing um, your feedback on this exciting new feature for Meetup. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.